Today we'll be utilizing the Sanqui tool to check out Umbreon in a red and blue solo run. So Google Sanqui if you want to use that for your own runs. This is by far my favorite evolution and maybe I'm wrong on this but I feel like it's a lot of others as well. I'm also interested to know your favorite evolution as well so let me know if maybe I just think too highly of Umbreon because it's a definite possibility. But just look at it. It's so cool and the Sanqui sprite being a scared cat is just the perfect aesthetic for for an October run. I love it. And if you need to know the rules for the run, they're in the description as always. And just really quickly, I'll just say that if you enjoy the content, likes and comments go a long way in helping out small channels grow. So comment Moon Kitty if you want to contribute. And this week, we're just getting straight into the action. No real intro. This was a really intriguing run to me because Umbreon is such a beefy tank. And with Gen 1 having the unified special stat that would later be split into both attack and defense, there was just some high potential. Now with red and blue special stat, Umbreon gets a major buff to its offensive capabilities with a whopping 130 in special, and that would put it tied for third for all Gen 1 Pokemon behind only Mewtwo and Alakazam, and it would leave it tied with Gengar. With a base stat total of 465, it would be a little bit further down at ninth overall, but that's still pretty solid. However, there are some problems with this run that we'll get into as we progress, and this is something that I run into often with the Sanqui tool is that the learn set just really cripples some runs. It'll be halfway through the game before I get the one singular move for the whole run that takes advantage of that big beautiful special and I don't learn any stab moves like a dark type move that would be a of great help like a faint attack. It's not the best and let's just start seeing how it played out. Now I did a few runs testing out how to best tackle the start of the game. No pun intended since we only start off with tackle, tail whip, and sand attack and originally I was grinding all the way up to level 13 for quick attack and that made Brock a lot easier But we we're gonna see me deviate from that strategy during this run because it just took a lot of time And I wanted to save some the idea here is simple in theory I have a really bulky Pokemon I have access to sand attack and tail whip and I went there as soon as I could after I battled the three Viridian force trainers and at level 8 It just didn't go that well and I won't touch on it too much right now rather than try over and over for luck this early, I leave to get some more levels. And you don't want to face the Light Years Junior Trainer early in the Sanque ROMs because both of his Pokemon have Sand Attack, and instead I grind up a small amount in Viridian Forest as I backtrack, and then I tackle the optional rival battle west of Viridian. The Pidgey has potential to be annoying, but I decide to be annoying first. I do a Sand Attack into two Tail Whips, and that makes Tackle do some respectable damage, and that's pretty much how it goes for both of his Pokemon, and it gets me some decent decent experience, but I'm just a little short of level 10, so I grind a couple more wild Pokemon, and now we can talk about the rock solid Pokemon trainer. Now like I talked about earlier, I was originally in that mindset that level 13 for quick attack was the only way this was possible, but if you think about it, 6 sand attacks makes you basically avoid all damage most of the time, tail whips can also reduce the defense unless he spams defense curls, and tackle will just slowly whittle down the rocks over time. It might take 35 tackles sometimes to get through, but the idea is that even if you go over to struggle, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if I can get past this battle three levels earlier than I anticipated, since you are more than likely just not going to take damage in return, so it'll be just dealing a single point of damage back to you. Now as for the Geodude, there's just a lot of defense curls here, so I just don't bother with tail whips, and after 23 tackles, we are moving on. Now Onyx in this mod has access to Rock Throw and Rage on top of the usual bide. Now here, I set up Sand Attacks for for some comfort from damage and the onyx just locks itself into rage and that allows me to not only set up sand attack freely but it also lets me set up tail whip for a six stage debuff to its defense to allow me to much less painfully get through this one and what surprised me about this one is i didn't even have to get to the struggle strats and i can't stress enough that i was doing this three levels earlier than i did on my first couple of test runs so that's pretty great looking ahead moving forward there are some problematic parts that go along with the 
Anqui ROMs and having only tackle and quick attack at this stage in the game. So the idea is to do some extra battles with the goal of hitting level 17 as soon as I can for Confuse Ray. With the new types added with this ROM and the top chart updated, some things you don't normally think about in red and blue do occur. Now this super nerd with a Magnemite and Voltorb that's normally a pretty great source of experience absolutely wrecks Umbreon. The thing that I didn't put together in my mind that should have been obvious is that Magnemite has its steel topping and since I have weak resisted normal moves I do hardly anything to it and on top of that it has Sonic Boom which completely negates my defense stat with its flat damage and needless to say this isn't a good fight to pick so I have to reset and move on. Now I stick to easier trainers from there and just like my last Sanqui run the nerd at the very end shows why it's a menace. I call this team composition a poison sandwich because he's got those bulky poison types that want to do annoying things like disable you or put poison on you while the Voltorb in the middle is the meat and potatoes that can really do some work with Sonic Boom. On my first attempt it goes about as bad as it can because I get poisoned early, I take some heavy damage in the middle and I once again have to reset pretty early in the run. Now I go back in the next attempt and I'm just able to get some luck and I make it through this one much easier but it is funny to me that on this version of red and blue certain trainers that you never really look at twice become quite difficult depending on the run and we'll see more of that coming up fairly soon. From there I grab the dome fossil because Umbreon has me feeling the dark side today and then I make my way to Cerulean to get into more problems. And this takes us straight into rival number two and a lot of these cross gen runs we really don't talk about the, some of the early battles but keep in mind that I've messed around with the run several times and this one is tough but with Pidgeotto as far as that goes you just don't want to take a sand attack as always nothing's changed there being level 17 would be ideal but I'm trying to balance in-game time with grinding and this is the best I could do for now as for the start of this battle I can play dirty as well with my own sand and on the first turn we trade sand attacks but I keep going and after some tail whips to make my weak moves do actual damage I'm able to get it down and here I level up to 17 this gives me access to confuse ray and I honestly really like this move 100% accuracy and the multiple chances to give your opponent a 50 50 chance to miss their turn and take a little bit of damage is just solid but it's very luck based now as for Abra we just did the run we know it can't hurt you so there's not much to really say here other than it just takes some extra time because I took a sand attack earlier for the Rattata I just go straight for damage here I'm tanky enough to survive whatever it's gonna throw at me and I take it out without anything interesting happens and now we can get into the boogeyman of this particular Sanqui run. So guys, let's talk about the rival having Charmander in these runs. To put it simple, it's a nightmare. And early on, it's even worse because it has Dragon Rage. Now, Umbreon is a fairly tanky Pokemon, a really tanky Pokemon. It has 95 base HP, and even then, a flat 40 points of health damage is roughly 70% of my entire health bar, even if I made it through this fight without taking a single point of damage. The idea is that I'll use utilize Confuse Ray and Sand Attack, but I just get quickly taken out here and that's another reset. Now we've been over the start last time and it's roughly the same. Our own Sand Attack helps us avoid Pidgeotto Sand Attack and the next two Pokemon aren't too bad. And instead, let's just kind of focus on Charmander just a little more. And by focus, I mean I get hit immediately with a Dragon Rage and I have to reset again. I can't stress enough how oppressive this move is this early in the game and it's just waiting at the end of the battle. You're basically at the mercy of luck and there's essentially nothing you can do outside of wasting a ton of time leveling up but let's not get too frustrated yet on the next attempt i have a sand attack on me from earlier in the battle and this one is rather painful i'm missing left and right but the annoying part is that this one just goes on for so long my attack gets lowered and i just miss too many times to make it through and eventually that old and reliable dragon rage sends me off to another reset once again and finally i get what i need it starts off the worst it can actually start off with an instant dragon rage but this time I'm over 40 health and I can survive. I toss a sand attack into a confuse ray and with the Charmander hurting himself two times I'm able to barely hang on with 3 HP and I make it through the battle. And you might be thinking this one doesn't look that great compared to some of the other runs you've done and you would be correct my friend. I think that what I forget sometimes and maybe some of you do as well is that it's okay for a Pokemon to not have a great run and 
and today's video is an exercise and a reminder to us all that it's all right to just have fun sometimes and not hyper fixate on perfect optimizations because at the end of the day these Sanquay runs are just for fun and they don't even count for anything outside of just seeing if something can dominate the game and it was kind of at this point after numerous test runs with Umbreon that I conceded that it just wasn't ever going to have a great time and moving forward just have some fun with me guys and by fun I mean more suffering I'd like to introduce you to the next annoying trainer the fourth person on Nugget Bridge when you are kind of already worn down is Taylor made to give Umbreon a hard time if you aren't prepared now she leads with a Pidgey and it has sand attack and it's just gonna slow you down just a little by itself it's not gonna kill you it's not too bad but the problem is when this Nidoran comes in and it has double kick here it crits immediately and I quickly go down for another reset. And it is worth noting that there's a basically identical trainer two battles earlier, but the fact that this one is deeper in when you've been worn down a little bit just makes it worse. The next attempt, I don't take a sand attack early and I utilize sand attacks of my own while I slowly chip down the Nidoran for revenge. And I do have two more resets on the very first hiker next to the elixir, but let's not show that and skip ahead a little bit. Before taking on Misty, getting Dig is key here. Now if I had to guess, the updated moves brings Dig down from 100 base power like it usually is all the way down to 60 base power, but it's still stronger than anything else we have access to at the moment. As for Misty, star you is whatever, and like always, it's the star me, that's the worry. Misty star me in these Sanquee runs is a nightmare. Now you would think with a decent move and a massive special it wouldn't really be bad for Umbreon, but this Starmie has Swift, so it can hit us when we go underground. It has a massive nuke and hydro pump, and it loves to crit. Now, I still come away with a victory on the first try, but when it's all said and done, I barely scrape by with the victory, and this one is really close, when on paper it looks like it really shouldn't be. Now we can pick up the pace a little bit, because honestly, things aren't that bad at all for a while, and getting access to Body Slam definitely helps, even without Stab, but it's yet another physical move, but let's not complain any more about that. I pick up the optional rare candy and then I can take on rival number three. The start of the battle is a classic sand attack off and at the end of the day I come out ahead and I cruise through. From there body slam is very powerful at this stage in the game and even in the base game even though we haven't used dragon rage outside of maybe one run this is about the time it stops being really overpowered and with Umbreon coming into its own with its bulk I can actually survive fairly easy and I avoid enough hit and smokescreen debuffs to get through this one with a couple more body slams and we can keep going. Now Surge is up next. We have Dig and a high special and I see absolutely no reason to dwell on this fight for too long. It's very easy. Rock Tunnel is nothing to write home about and we can pick up roughly at the halfway point in Celadon. I do some minor shopping in the Mart but the main thing to note is that I get a fresh water for the guard so that we can finally get Umbreon's most powerful move in the ROM. And it's like a lot of run here it's psychic it doesn't get stabbed sure but it does utilize our special attack and that's going to make the game flow much easier than that very rough start at the first of the game note that I make a decision here to get rid of confused ray rather than sand attack now generally speaking I love confused ray and I like it way better but there's some in-game fights that were really tough in testing and this time I decided I wanted just to stay dirty the whole entire game and keep the sand on me this run and we'll see how it plays out. From there it's time for the rocket hideout and we've seen this scenario play out for many Pokemon where they hit a big mid game power spike and there's no exception here. I clean house and I mow down Giovanni with our newfound psychic powers and we can move on just like that. Next up I battle a few trainers in Erica's gym since we have psychic it's very easy and then I take her on. With such an impressive special it's really not a surprise that I can one shot the victory bell and from there her team generally falls rather easy once the infamous 100% Razor Leafer goes down. Let's skip over Pokemon Tower since it's rather easy and let's finish up some errands like depositing items in the box, picking up the final HMs of the run down in the Safari Zone, and making one last final buy inside the Celadon Mart for some extra vitamins. Once that's over, I tackle Koga first since I have Psychic and his entire team is weak to it, and the Muck isn't a one shot, and that's really the only interesting thing to say about the battle, and the rest go down in one hit, and I get that precious speed 
speed badge boost going ahead. The only place left to go is Silfco, and after visiting the 10th floor for the rare candy, it's time to take a look at rival number 5. I enter the battle missing a lot of health, and that's just a blunder on my part, it's just a little mistake. But Psychic is the main play here on Pidgeot, and after taking some more damage, I take it out without too much hassle. Next up is Execute, and believe it or not, this is one of the worst parts of the battle, maybe even of the run. Now I don't have a great answer, and I can't one-shot it, and taking Poison or Paralysis really make this fight tough, and this is where we'll start to see Sand Attack come into play a little more. In this specific situation, I do think Confused Ray would probably be better because despite two sand attacks I still get paralyzed before moving on. Now finally the Gyarados takes me out and it's with Thrash which is kind of weird to see but whatever. But just being paralyzed, going second, not doing a lot of damage and missing a turn it just kind of forces another reset. Now let's pick back up at Execute on the second attempt and I get put to sleep and ultimately I get paralyzed again but I did test Psychic to see if it, the resisted damage was alright and it was okay. As for Gyarados it's pretty much exactly the same except this time I just have a little more health and I'm able to actually survive but I'm pretty much on my last legs here but honestly it really doesn't matter I could be at 1 HP on the Alakazam because dark type is immune to psychic and it's pretty much the most pure form of a wall that we've ever seen in any of my runs and after I take a kinesis I get by and we really don't have to talk about Alakazam anymore finally up is the devil of the run and we haven't talked about it since rival number two but Charizard is a huge headache now here it just crits with a wing attack just to show its versatility and that's a reset. On the third attempt I just get filled with the sand attack rage and I toss three of them at these annoying little eggs and that allows me to finally see the rest of the battle without a pesky status condition on me. And I squander this opportunity really bad. I try to get cute here, I press my luck, I try to go for more sand attacks on the Gyarados and I just get crit and I'm at a mere 12 hit points before I leave this battle and obviously at the end we we just see a dragon rage and that ends the run once again. Let me just state the obvious here and say that this fight isn't great. We've already seen some resets and for my money I would say this is one of the worst fights in the entire game. Now here we get to see the absolute worst case scenario result when I'm poisoned and although Alakazam can't hurt me himself it can just use Kinesis and other defensive moves and just kind of stall me out and outlast me as I die a slow and painful death. And we're gonna cut a long story short here. I finally make it to the Charizard with no status condition but my accuracy is lowered and you would think that it wouldn't be too bad but luckily the AI just didn't go straight Dragon Rage but I do miss a few times and despite being in a really good position I barely hang on to finally take this fight with a mere 6 HP left and there's not much more to say about Sanqui Charizard for now. Let's skip Giovanni number 2 and instead look at a very rare occurrence in my runs. I need levels for later so I visit the fighting dojo in Saffron for some easy experience. Now Gen 1 just doesn't really have great fighting moves and I do have Psychic. I can essentially one shot every Pokemon from these trainers. It's very quick. It gets me just a little bit less than two levels which I think we'll need later on in the game. Next up is Sabrina and this is a very free fight. We've talked about Alakazam in the last rival fight and this applies for what's usually the worst parts of her team. Mr. Mom is half fairy type so remember that but I don't think it has any fairy moves so this one is just kind of a cliff note on the overarching tale of Umbreon's journey. Now we can take a nice brisk swim down to Cinnabar and unlike a lot of weeks I'm actually gonna do some battling here and I because I, I really do need the extra levels at the end game but we have Dig and it's just not that bad. After that it's time for a little Tombstoner brother and we can just skim over Blaine this week. I essentially just use Dig over and over, and I'm in no danger with our high special, and we just roll over this fight. And we can also take a very quick look at Giovanni as well. This one is just a psychic spam of a battle. I take some extra time on the Doug Trio because of Dig and whatnot, but overall it's another easy battle, and that's the gym portion of the game down, and it looked pretty simple since we got psychic, right? Well friends, trouble could still be on the horizon, but first I do pick up mimic. Now we have to face rival number six. Now we have more levels now but so does the rival so let's see if this is a repeat 
of the Silphco battle. Pidgeot is first, and this one is simple. Just use Psychic, and it'll go down easy enough, but it's never really been an issue in this fight. Rhyhorn is even easier, and we can just cruise on. Now it's time for some egg action, and the problems persist here, and I get put to sleep, but it kind of turns out to be a blessing, because we're going to wake up eventually, and while you're asleep, you can't be paralyzed or poisoned, and because of that and one sand attack, it's enough to avoid any statuses for the rest of the fight, and I'm moving on pretty healthy to the Gyarados. And here, I want to use sand attack, and despite being massively debuffed, of course the Gyarados is going to hit multiple dragon rages, and I'm at a mere 50 points of health before I get past this one, and we've been over Alakazam, it can't hurt us, and I don't see a Kinesis on this attempt, and overall it's a pretty free fight before Charizard. And I'm just really low here, I do go for sand attacks and I hope for the best, but it's not enough, a slash slips through the cracks, and I'm taken out once again. For the next attempt, I teach Mimic over Dig because it's ran its course, and we can just dive back in to see if this adjustment pays off. On the Pidgeot, I use Mimic for agility, but I think Roost would also be a solid option here. I figured the extra speed and badge boost might be what I need to get over the hump, but let's skip ahead to the Execute. I start with Sand Attack, it misses, so I go for another one, and eventually it goes for a Solar Beam, it charges it up, and that's my chance to go for two Body Slams, and I can finish it off pretty clean. On Gyarados, I go for a Sand Attack, and after it misses its first move, I just go straight for the nukes and I take it down and considering that Alakazam can't hurt me we're actually at full health at the end of the fight. Now I do level up here and I lose my badge boost but I'm still in a great position. I'm fast, I move first, I toss some sand and with this much health I'm pretty much free to tank anything but I do go for three total sand attacks. I'm just confident that I can outrace the Charizard and that's what I do. Now in hindsight being at full health I wonder if I could have just went straight psychic but I do think playing it safe was probably the smarter play and that's the fight over and this one was better than last time by far and it had me feeling fairly confident looking ahead but let's see if that confidence was warranted. I have all of my rare candies at this point and I go ahead and I level up to 60 before heading into the Elite Four and let's just dive in. Lorelai's first and leads with Dugong. I'm in a good position for this fight as a whole because I can just tank anything and if they get an attack drop it just doesn't affect me. Psychic does a lot of damage but Dugong does have the bug move signal beam and it's super effective but I can two shot it so it's not really an issue. Cloyster has pretty low special. It does survive and it gets off a hydro pump that honestly does really pathetic damage and we can just move on. Now we're on to Slowbro. I can do the tried and true strategy of mimicking and Amnesia, and we can put ourselves into a Super Saiyan level of special. I do try to go for body slams here, but Psychic just does more damage, and I eventually correct that mistake. And the final two Pokemon, they just can't withstand a special that's this boosted, and I just kind of win with no problems. Next up is Bruno, and you might think that a Dark type being weak to fighting, and the way Dialga struggled here would be like an indication, but I have Psychic, and that's pretty much the commentary for the fight. I have Psychic, that's all you really need to know. Looking at Agatha, I resist ghost moves, so it's kind of like a mini Sabrina situation, albeit to a lesser degree. She's also completely weak to Psychic, and once again, we are just kind of demolishing the Elite Four at this point. Now guys, it's time for Lance, and this one isn't great, and I made a huge blunder here. This one was hard for me to watch back, but we'll get into all that in just a second. Now on the first attempt, I use Mimic just to kind of see what the Gyarados has, and I end up taking Hyper Beam for now, and it's just not a great choice looking back. I take a decent amount of damage and things go back and forth a little bit, but I get control of the battle, we move on. The Dragonairs themselves aren't that bad, but one of the core problems with this fight is Dragon Rage. The first three Pokemon have it and its flat damage adds up very quickly. I take some chip damage here and it takes me down to the yellow health and now we get to see Aerodactyl. I take a hit that gets me all the way down to the red health, but a couple of sand attacks keep me safe and eventually I move on. Now, on the Dragonite, I set up a sand attack, and it actually looks like I might pull this one off by the skin of my teeth, but a hyper potion gives it just enough opportunities to sneak through a wing attack through the sand, and that forces my first reset of the Elite Four. Alright, so jumping back in on Gyarados, it's roughly the same. I take some damage, but it's not that bad, and I save Mimic. Now the goal here, my mindset, 
bit is that I'm going to use Mimic on Agility on one of these Dragonairs for a slight boost like in the last gravel fight, but there are some unforeseen problems and that's the fact that these Dragonairs have Thunder Wave and taking so much chip damage and always moving second and having that chance to have your turn completely skipped is just awful and it makes this fight bad. And guys, I reset a ton here and it's always related to not having really a great time to set up or being paralyzed. And let me just touch on that blunder that I just talked about. And that's the fact I forgot rest on the SS Anne. In my test runs, I had it. And here, I just simply forgot it. There's no excuse. I could have won this battle on the very first attempt if I had it. And countless other times as well. It would be so simple. I just set up, I use rest, I get all my health back, and then I eliminate the paralysis status. And just overall, guys, it was extremely frustrating to play this knowing that I forgot it. And even watching the footage back, I just rolled my eyes at my past self. Now, this was a huge blunder. I'm aware of it. All you can really do is learn from it and let's not dwell on it. And to cut a long story short, I go all the way to reset number 22 and this fight was very ugly. The solution was actually pretty simple. There just really wasn't any extra room to set up and my final strategy was simply mimic hydro pump from the Gyarados. Now this allows me to go fully offensive and since it's a range to one shot the two Dragonairs with Psychic, they don't really get a lot of opportunities to get off a Thunder Wave. This means when I make it to the Aerodactyl, the Hydro Pump I took from Gyarados can one shot this Flying Rock and now I'm in a much better position. Now Dragonite still does some damage so I sand attack it and although it does slip a move through, I'm just healthy enough to survive and finally the nightmare is over. Or is it? Did I figure out the rivals team in the last battle or is this champion fight going to be a repeat of the Sylph Co battle? Now the huge change, a very huge change with the Sanqui Rom is that Pidgeot still has agility here whereas it doesn't in regular red and blue version so that's a huge positive for Umbreon and pretty much the main reason I brought Mimic. So I Mimic it, I don't set up yet and I burst it down. Alakazam is all but useless this run and you would think this would be a great time to set up but I was worried about connecting Nisus and leveling up and after the battle we do level up Rhydon comes in and this is where you set up for that extra speed now Rhydon itself does some pretty nice damage to us but now I'm very fast I have boost for executor I do one sand attack to lower its accuracy down and then I go only offensive it misses its attack and that means that I am get through this one unscathed which is great Gyarados is next sand attack would be all right here but I opt just to go two straight psychics to take it out I hope that it would just use something like a Leer or something non-damaging, but it does take us down to 60 health with a Dragon Rage before I move on. Finally, it's Sanqui Charizard. Agility Mimic was the huge upgrade from my other runs, and that means that I get to go first and I get off the Sand Attack. This means that when it goes for Slash, there's only a 66% chance for it to land, and it doesn't. And from there, I keep tossing the Sand to up my chances, and it works. I avoid the rest of the attacks and Psychic takes me home and carries the run to the finish line. And that's it. Umbreon has done it. Now this run was a troubled one. There was about three or four spots that were problematic and I thought I would solve some more of the issues this run but I just couldn't. But before we take a look at the stats, let's take a look at Mewtwo. And just like Alakazam, its main form of damage, just we're immune to it. It has to use Barrier, Swift, or Recover to do anything but it's just not enough. I take Recover for myself for some safety and after it sets up some barriers, I start to go psychic and this one is a free first turn victory due to our monster type advantage. Now let's take a look at Umbreon stats. It finishes with a level of 64, 22 resets and a final end game time of 3 hours and 46 minutes. Now could I do another run and improve it? Absolutely. Now forgetting rest for Lance cost me a lot of resets and I could definitely cut down on a lot of those with that change alone. Now I could also adopt a swift rest strategy for rival number five so that kinesis from the alakazam wasn't that bad but overall there's just so many things early like the double kicking nidoran or the the rival number two fight in general and it just makes this run not feel great at all now i definitely had fun with the run i'll say that i like umbreon and it's not going to
going to change that fact, but it's just not built to dominate the game in these Sanqui ROMs, and that's fine. Now, if it got a natural healing move like Moonlight, or maybe something like a Fain Attack or a Dark Pulse to take advantage of its special early, then we might be on to a really great run. But as it stands now, this one was pretty much just for fun. That's how I played it, and I personally don't want to play Umbreon again. But that's going to do it for me. If you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe and catch me streaming right here on YouTube every Friday at 2 p.m. Central Time. And special thanks to my channel members. And remember, I record my videos a little bit in advance, so if it took me a couple of weeks to get this out, you'll be on here eventually. Now, special thanks to Mutus Dozen, D's Masters, TR2G Hipster, Cheesy Speakeasy, Josh Frement, and Kindle LC. Now, the support you provide gives me a lot of hope for the future. I can't thank you enough, but if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!